Oh boy, look what I've got here. It has been way too long since I've done a video on desktop Linux minimalism, but I think it's time that I touch on it here today because there's been some changes in the desktop Linux landscape that I think have shaken up the meta for minimalism just a little bit. So here, I have the philosophy page of suckless.org. And if you guys are not aware of the suckless utilities and the suckless devs, let me tell you, these guys are some of the greatest software developers alive today. I think they're mostly German, which of course tracks with the superiority of German engineering, right? Except these guys also believe in free software. So us plebs get to enjoy their very elegant superior software as well for free. So Suckless Software, it gets its name because it sucks less. It sucks a lot less than most of the competition software. And this is because of the philosophy that these devs follow when they are creating their software. Their philosophy is about keeping things simple, minimal, and usable. We believe that this should become the mainstream philosophy in the IT sector. Unfortunately, the tendency for complex, error-prone, and slow software seems to be prevalent in the present-day software industry. We intend to prove the opposite with our software projects. So just like they say, this should become the mainstream philosophy in IT. The suckless philosophy should go mainstream. I wholeheartedly agree that there's way too much bloat in most IT systems. And when I talk about bloat here, I'm not really talking about software that uses a lot of RAM or is heavy on your CPU. Suckless software isn't great for having low RAM usage so that you can use it on a 12 year old Libre booted ThinkPad. I mean, sure, that is one thing that a lot of people do use DWM for, but most modern systems are going to run KDE, GNOME, even Windows 11 is gonna be pretty fast on most modern computers if you spent more than a grand on your computer. But the one thing that you can't really throw money at uh, in the computer world is security. And this is where bloat poses a real issue. Bloated software always has more bugs. I've heard long time developers like Graybeards that have been doing this stuff since forever. They will say that you might find anywhere from five to 10 bugs per 1000 lines of production code, just as a general rule of thumb. And the more bugs that you have in your code, the more likely it is that one or more of those bugs, when they're exploited or maybe they have to be exploited in a certain way, are going to allow a hacker to do some serious damage to a system that's running that vulnerable software. So security, that's the real reason that we want to have minimalism and minimalist desktop setups. Our projects focus on advanced and experienced computer users in contrast with the usual proprietary software world or many mainstream open source projects that focus more on average and non-technical end users. We think that experienced users are mostly ignored. This is particularly true for user interfaces such as graphical environments, on desktop computers, on mobile devices, and in so-called web applications. We believe that the market of experienced users is growing continuously, with each user looking for more appropriate solutions for his or her work style. This is the part of the suckless philosophy and the aspect of suckless software that I really love. So they say that their projects are focused on advanced and experienced computer users, but when they say advanced users, they aren't really talking about professional C programmers or really programmers at all. Okay, get that out of your head. You don't need to know C or be an expert at it to customize their software. This is the default configuration file for DWM. It's pretty straightforward. Every section of the code is labeled with comments. So you can figure this out pretty easily. If you can figure out how to edit a video game file to do things like make the cars go faster or to give the NPCs more health, then you can figure this out. And 
adding patches is usually just as easy as using the patch command. So because DWM is so simple, you can easily customize it to optimize your workflow, to get your workflow as quick and efficient as possible. Most office jobs where you're working with spreadsheets and emails and editing files and so on, all of that work is typically faster with the keyboard once you learn all the keyboard shortcuts for your different programs than if you use the mouse for everything. Well, DWM and DMenu, they let you take that keyboard-centric workflow that you're probably going to adapt to to get as efficient as possible to the next level. And some people who really get deep into using Suckless software, they end up ditching the mouse altogether. So if you need to use a computer professionally and you aren't a complete noob who isn't afraid to edit the source code yourself directly and patch some things in if you need that functionality, if you're not afraid to do that, then this is definitely the software for you to use. You're gonna have better security, better productivity, lower resource usage, great for when you need it, and also Suckless software has fewer dependencies, but there is one dependency that their software has that is a little bit problematic. So if we take a look at the page for DWM, we see DWM is a dynamic window manager for X. If we take a look at the page for DMenu, DMenu is a dynamic menu for X. You guys starting to notice a pattern here? What about ST? ST is a simple terminal implementation for X. None of the most popular suckless utilities support Wayland. They're all dependent on X11, which is absolutely not suckless. X11 doesn't even follow the Unix philosophy of do one thing and do it right, because X11 has done a lot of things over the years and still isn't that great at any of them. So in case you didn't know, X11 is a display server, and the display server is needed for making the graphical interface possible. Without it, all we would have is a TTY and a terminal on our Linux systems. Now, the problem with X11 is it's a display server that's almost 40 years old. Back in the 80s, when the X window system was first released, the paradigm of computers was completely different than what we have now. PCs were not common at all, and the computers that people typically were using in offices and schools were just terminals used to interact with a remote mainframe. All of the code from the mainframe era is still present in X11. And instead of things just being rewritten for the modern systems, the code, all of that ancient code was just bent and hacked at to make it act as a local display server. But it's still a network protocol. At the end of the day, it was still, you know, originally meant for mainframes, you know, for remote systems or for mainframes that are on a network. And that's why all the X11 graphical applications can be run remotely, even though most people don't use that feature. Wayland is a much more minimalistic display server, and I think that one day it's going to end up becoming the standard display server for Linux desktops. So we can get an idea of how simple Wayland is if we compare it to Xorg or if we compare their GitHub repos with the Glock extension that tells us roughly how many lines of code each one has. So we can see that libx11 has over 379,000 lines of code, while the Wayland repo has almost 49,000 lines of code. So this is a much simpler display server. Uh, it also tends to function better. You know, Wayland draws perfect frames, while x11 tends to have some tearing and some stuttering issues. There's also an issue with x11. Well. I guess not an issue because the maintainers consider it to be a feature where any program that's running on X11 is able to read the inputs and outputs from any other program. So if a malicious program were to get on your computer, key logging would be pretty easy for it to do compared to a Wayland desktop where each process is going to be separate by default. So circling back to the suckless philosophy, I think it's a very good philosophy, pretty much the same as the Unix philosophy, but without Wayland support, 
I don't know if these programs can really be considered that minimalistic anymore. I mean, sure, they're minimalistic for X11 desktops, and X11 is still the most common display server on desktop Linux, but I can see Wayland overtaking it. You know, the Wayland project is pretty mature at this point. So far, all of my software is working in it. I've got Firefox and OBS working with hardware acceleration. Uh, there's still some other things that I have left to install here on Gen 2, but you know, Wayland is definitely on the up and up. And by the way, the window manager I'm using is not DWM, it's DWL, basically DWM ported to Wayland, which was pretty easy for this developer here to do because DWM was so simple. But you don't even have to use a simple window manager on Wayland if you don't want to. GNOME, KDE, and I think XFCE as well now works on Wayland. That's something I should try out because XFCE is my favorite desktop environment. Uh, and I might actually just end up using that instead of DWL. Uh, we'll see because I do use the mouse a lot on uh, my for my workflow. I'm probably not going to end up being just keyboard centric because, well, I need the mouse for video editing as well as for thumbnail editing. But I just wanted to drop this knowledge on you guys about the current state of suckless utilities and Wayland support. It would be cool to get Wayland support in the official D menu and DWM packages, but either way, we've got the suckless philosophy that other people are going to use to make great software for Wayland.